Welcome to the new visual and audio peak performance podcast with myself, Richard Pups. Today's special guest and a catch up um, for my last podcast is Mr. Gregory Francis. Greg, if you'd like to introduce to the people and tell them what you do. Hello, my name is Greg Francis. I direct films, documentaries, music videos, a few of little side hustles as well. Uh, yeah, good friend of Richard Pups, Richard P. Boss over here. <laughs> And so yeah, here today for a little conversation. So yeah, yeah. Forward to it. really, we're just going to be um, just freestyling and talking about life and love and and, and different aspects of, of what's happened in the last um, what's, what's it been now? It's been about a year and a half since our last podcast. Wasn't it? Yeah, right. Yeah. Really, but I suppose I know a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. into the lockdown. Yeah, so there's been some some deaths, some births, some birthdays, and some a lot of changes. changes. Yeah, a lot of changes in our lives. Um, Really, today I really want to touch upon the topic of love and just like um, seeing if coming out of the pandemic, post pandemic, if you've changed and your thoughts about certain things have changed since the last time that we spoke. So, um, yeah, how's things been for you? For me, yeah, since the last time we, we spoke. Well, obviously, we spoke numerous times since then, but yeah, since our podcast related, how I've been, uh, like lockdown was interesting to say the least it was a big learning curve for me not me for six if not more so uh yeah. took me on many journeys like many uh, very intense roller coaster of emotions but ultimately i've come out a bit i've come out a bit a much better person for it you know what i'm saying like uh this is just kind of heightened my focus on life and certain things i should be focusing on is uh made me reflect a lot on myself past trauma, which I know is a bit of a buzzword nowadays, but it yeah. has a lot of past trauma to deal with. A lot of relationships got terminated. <laughs> a lot of relationships, well, a few relationships got reinforced, which is uh, interesting and, 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 and beneficial to me, of course. And I've, you know what, I've just been doing a lot of reading, Pete. Just a lot of trying to get to know myself a bit better, how my mind works, yeah. just understand understand myself and just understand a lot of other aspects of life, you know, so over, overcoming adversity. Definitely. One of, yeah, so to interrupt you, one of the things that I've, I've realised as well is that, like, I pretty much took a lot of stuff for granted um, pre, pre-pandemic. Like, um, I remember speaking to people who are no longer here, saying to them, like, yeah, I'll meet you next week and, you know, um, I'll, I'll get that CD off you or, you know, I'll meet you next week and, you know, we'll, we'll catch up and stuff. And then now it's like they're gone and you don't really have the chance to do that again. So my outlook on on love and I suppose my time has completely changed. Whereas before I'd be like kind of kicking the can down the road and thinking, oh, yeah, I've got plenty of time. We can do this then. We can do it then. And kind of almost pre-planning far into the future. You can't. We don't. We don't that's the thing. We don't have, yeah. we don't have t- time, really, P. Like, yeah. You don't. That's why... It's important to take every moment. It's very important. I know it's easy said than done. I know yeah. I'm some, some, some scholar or something like that, but it's, it's so important just to make the most of the time you have because like, no one's promised anything in life. So it's just important just to, to save those moments and, and, and create as much happiness and positivity as you can. Yeah, and it's 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 kind of given me a, a, a lightning bolt, if I'm honest with you, because you know, getting on, on the topic of love again, it's just like sometimes I found myself holding back love because of the fear of the pain when you lose that love. 100%. So I haven't given it. And now, after seeing what happened kind of pre-pandemic and during pandemic and now post-pandemic, it's made me realise that you may as well love and it's actually a strength to actually love rather than a weakness. Like, But it's not easy though, Pete. I love it like... We've had this conversation before, and love. In my, I can only speak for myself, but love is, I would say, is the most like, complex emotion. It is. This is so many layers to it. It's, mm. You know, isn't it like like things like hate is like it's quite pure, <laughs> whereas love yeah. is, is extremely complex. Like you can love someone and, and and highly dislike them at the same time. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And also, like I said, love is to love is to be <laughs> part of love is to be vulnerable. You see what I'm saying? And then, and then you have to be willing to show that vulnerability just to give someone something, a piece of you, metaphorically, and 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 you stand a chance of being rejected or that piece, that, that 
shining art, the oracle where the shining flipping symbol that could, you could they could tarnish that they could damage yeah. it and yeah. that's damaging part of you so people who have been hurt in the past like we all have been you're less willing to give that because it's, it's a lot to give and not necessarily get back yeah yeah and, and that, that's always quite relevant to no, so that's okay. It's all right. Yeah, it's uh, basically, and that's, that's kind of where like unconditional love comes in. And I've only, I was having a conversation with another mutual friend recently, and I think I'm, I'm 40 now, you know what I'm saying? I think I've only been like this, that this year that I've actually realized what unconditional love means. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's mad. Yeah. And there's, like, like you were saying before, there's just so many layers. And to touch upon something that you said a minute ago, you said that, like, giving love is actually a strength. It is, right? Where, where, when I grew up, and my thoughts on the subject when I was younger was that it's actually a bit of a weakness. 100%. So I wouldn't give love to, to hardly anybody. Yeah. And I can't even really remember my first experience of, almost getting hurt or rejected to make me start to kind of be stingy or tight with love. I can't you really probably do, but it. your, maybe your mind's kind of blocked it out. Yeah, 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 maybe, maybe I've blocked it out. But um, I can remember ones where I was conscious that I was withholding back love. And yeah, I thought it was a strength. I would, I would pride myself on being like um, a Vulcan. 100%. With zero emotion, you know, I'd, I'd pride myself on being like, Darth Vader, like absolutely zero emotion, just like I wouldn't really care. But I can relate to that as well. I think most people can. Yeah, I can definitely yeah, relate to yeah. that, man. But I think that even me and you have had numerous conversations about this. That as we've grown and as we've learned about ourselves and done done that that little bit of shadow work, we've realised that it's actually the opposite. It was such a weakness for us to opt for the almost the easy option of not showing love. Yeah. It is weakness. I spent most of my I spent most of my life being that that dude, P, and just repeating the same. Well, like you know, like again, like we say, love. You can talk about family love. You can talk about love for music. You can talk about love for art. You can talk about love for friends. Yeah. Love for romantic. All these different terms, but just keep it in one sort of lane right now for me. Romantically, I might get too deep and like, look back to turn this into like a flipping uh, counseling session for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, I kind of I, I come up in an environment where. Like, you know, it is what it is, but it wasn't the most like, emotionally saturated or like loving environment, you get what I'm saying? Mm. It was kind of like, I can't, pretty much kind of grew up on my own mentally, you know, in so many different ways, but yeah. But yeah, I, 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 you know, I wasn't, I didn't really know how to express love. So when uh, romantically opportunities where love was offered to me, I didn't have to accept it. I often fought against it and I tarnished it as well. Yeah. And I abused, yeah, I I abused it. I abused it, man. So we got to the point where I realized that I was the common, the common denominator in all these situations. And, and ultimately, I realized that I kept on not giving and relationships deteriorating or me ending certain situations. And then me realizing after those situations that were finished, that I actually did like, like, care for these people, love these people. But I think, like, yeah, it's just, we can just, yeah, we can tarnish things, man. If Definitely. We, if we, don't have to, if we don't have to maintain and, and, and nourish, nurture. Yeah, yeah. Things. And you know, it's a shame that there's not like a, a manual or a guide on how to do this because then I think we'll all be like in, in we'll all realise what we need to do a lot sooner. Like I've, I've in the past made some like horrendous um, decisions, I think is the best word I could say, um, based on, on, on fear and love you know, like of hiding from fear and also from, I suppose, then at one point giving too much love and then ending up um, with your worst fears confirmed. And then that locks you back into the box of, well, I'm not giving any love now, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I often looked at it like um, the less love I gave and the more cold my heart was, the more stronger I felt. Because yeah. the more in control of every single situation I felt, I could walk away from anything and just be like, bye. Because I was able to have that switch just to turn it off. And it's only like, I would say honestly, in the last maybe five, six years that I've been able to slowly release 
that that you know me and you've had conversations before where you you said to me Richard you know that that's based on you being cold and I'll be like no 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 and then that's after, the ego yeah yeah, yeah. then yeah. after I've gone away and thought about it I've been like actually you know what yeah I need to um I need to you know do the right thing in the situation because it is the the grim reaper of love coming to lock the gate again you know and um it's only natural for your brain to try and like protect you though yeah yeah I'm, re but, I'm reading a really interesting book at the moment uh I won't give the name but I won't be at the end of it but yeah uh just, just, just kind of just tell you about like, how the brain works and it's got like defense mechanisms that they just it's, yeah, it's, it's just cycles you get into cycles yeah. of doing things man you've got to have the, the, the willpower and the tenacity just to break these cycles otherwise you just spend the rest of your life miserable yeah and the thing is it's like i hate to use the the whole cliche of oh maybe it's something to do with your childhood and stuff like that but i think a lot of the stuff that i think we're beings that just collect different um um times in our life and we store them in our brain and we use them for future purposes. For example, if you was a child and you was um, playing in your dad's toolbox and he came downstairs and he said, what are you doing? And he shouted at you and took it. You, to you, you're not doing nothing wrong. So your dad shouted at you for not a very good reason. And then that would, that could, if it happened on a few occasions, make you think, wow, I thought this guy loved me. Like he's shining at me for using his toolbox, just using his tools, I'm just playing the mechanic. And now I can't trust him. So then if you collect a few of those sort of moments in your life, that can also make you show love and give love differently. Of course, man, you know? Well, they, I think like, you know, you say about your childhood and stuff, but I feel that's where a lot of our foundations come from, our lessons are learned in those early stages. And, you know, certain things that do happen can like, they go on to trigger you. Good or bad. hundred percent. hundred percent. So I yeah. think it's important to start like, understanding that. And that's why I think we're living in a really interesting era right now where like two grown men could have this conversation. Yes. You see yes. what I'm saying? Like, I don't think, well, I know definitely flipping 10 years ago, let alone 20 years ago, I would be in a mindset to have this conversation. But I think it's just a matter of just being comfortable with admitting that you don't necessarily know everything and just that you're prepared to make the changes just to be a better person. Do you see what I'm saying? hundred percent. Because like for me personally, I've got this saying that when you know better, you do better. And when I was younger, I made some howlers, like some real proper howlers where um, people who I was supposed to love, I didn't treat like I loved them. And people who maybe I shouldn't have given love to, I gave love to. So it's like all that's mixed common, up emotions. Common, yeah. Um, and like, it's only now as I'm older, like we're having this conversation now, like I couldn't, Growing up, tell my friends that I love them because they'll be like, I oh, know, yeah, of course. Yeah, Literally, yeah. Are, you, are, you, are you all right? Yeah, you, 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 you coming out, like, you know, yeah, yeah. like, are you, it's all right if you're gay, Richard, you know, it's, it's all right. And then it would be like a joke, but they'll be kind of like, I wonder if he is, because he's telling me he loves me. But now, like I say, um, I'm glad that the world's kind of evolved and we can talk about our emotions like we are now and even have it live and, and record it and show, you know, people in different countries that. Like we can, we can. It's 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 a good thing to share love, and it's a good thing to it's talk strength. about love. Yeah, it's a strength for them, man. Yeah, yeah. Like we said before, no, I said this in the podcast again, so I ain't before. So I'm not going to repeat myself, but I'll, I'll openly tell you that I love you, Peter. Like, yeah. Like, why would I not, man? Yeah. Like, yeah. It doesn't make sense for yeah. me not to do that. And you know what? You've got a saying that, like, you constantly say to all of us, to all, all our little crew, is that tomorrow's not promised. It's not, please. So imagine something happening, and and us not being able to share how we feel about each other. That, that will hurt me. It will yeah. crush me, P. It will crush me. Yeah. There's so many people in my life that I didn't have that opportunity to, to say how I felt. Yeah, or stuff yeah, just yeah. Just circumstances, like, we're just not in each other's lives anymore. Yeah. And then, you know, but again, you have to learn from these lessons and prepare just to, there's strength to be seen or expressed in showing your vulnerable and vulnerability. I mean, I think I, I stand by that. You know what I'm saying? Even having this conversation now, it does make you feel a little bit uncomfortable, but you've got to challenge yourself, man, and be prepared to come out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Otherwise, how are you going to grow? Yeah. It's like you have to break something down to rebuild it. Yeah, yeah. And a hundred percent. And and you know, I like I have been in positions before where ego's got in the way of telling of me allowing myself to tell a person that I love them. It was like, no, you can't go, no, you can't do that. But it's like it shows our growth that A, we can do this podcast, and B, we can take the the 
walk the walk that we're talking. So the stuff that we're talking about now, we can then, like I've seen like Loki and, and JB and stuff out, you know, in places and tell them, oh, I miss you, I love you, and stuff like that. And I love that we can all do that. 100%. You know, um, so it showed massive growth. So a question that I wanted to ask you is what is your relationship with love like now compared to previously? It's a lot better. It's a lot healthier. Like I'm still trying to I'm still trying to get my head around it. To be honest, you, Pete. So it's a complex thing, man. You know, it is ultimately, Pete. You know, it is for me, right? I can't speak for myself, but I have learned to love myself a great, a significant amount more. I don't think I really one. I didn't know myself as wanky as, as wanky to it as a uh, whatever they might. It's like, all right. You, you you can swear on this podcast. It's cool. Michael, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> as wanky as that might come across, like I've learned to love myself a lot more and understand myself, what I like, what I don't like, what I'm prepared to live with and what I'm not going to tolerate. Like, you know I stay. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You know I stay. <laughs> so I think that, yeah, it's just about just like self-love and just wanting to attract that level of respect and, yeah, I think respect and, and love back in, in your world. and. Also allowing myself to let my guard down and tell people how I feel about them as well. And let people into my world. I'm, I'm, I can be quite guarded at times. And I, but I've learned why I am that way. And I know I'm why I am that way. So I think it's just a matter of just being more open to new experiences, different people, and just opening up really. Yeah. Hopefully that kind of answers the question. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And just, just to be a bit more open. Yeah. And I think that it's 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 also key to kind of understand within yourself that there's different types of love. Like mm. there's there's people who you can love, but you just can't necessarily be around yeah, them. Got this, yeah. yeah. And there's no wrong there's yeah, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that, man. There's yeah. a, there's a there's a bag of people like that in my life. Yeah. Yeah, some people they I wouldn't say I love just maybe tolerate and just keep them at a distance. But yeah, it's it's a difficult one. Yeah, yeah. Because some people you can love that and it's not good for you, man. There's some people just like kind of cancerous. Yeah. You see yeah. what I'm saying? And they just they just pull your energy. Yeah. You've got no way to stir. There's there's also blood, like like family that you just don't like you can love them. But not even want to be anywhere near them. Sometimes you just don't like, vibe, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm not really the sort of person to cut you off again, mate. No, I'm not really the sort of person that, like, I don't believe blood is thicker than water in this life. Like, I think that yeah. it's like, I mean, it's a bit of a dead out thing to say. So I think that it just take love where you can find it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm incredible love, that sincere love. You know what I'm saying? Some people say they love you and they, they, they don't get love. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? They love how you make them feel, yeah, yeah. but they don't necessarily love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is understandable. Yeah, yeah. Which is fine. It's it's fine. It's, but you got, it's important to be aware of that, though. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's important to to say, okay, I kind of see what's happening here, and I feel not you, but in very much like, you have things to deal with. So I let you just. Do your thing. Yeah. And I'm just gonna be over here. And if you're ready to cut that talk again or move or maneuver again with me, then then we can do that. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. definitely. There's 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 another type of love which is like compassionate love, which is like deep rooted love, which you have for like um long term partners perhaps, or um, you know, your your siblings or your children. And that is a whole different type of love. Of like when if they're hurting you hurt. Of course, man. You know. I imagine as, as, as a parent, I don't have kids, but as I imagine that bond as a as, as a parent, then that you, you get that. And I can I can I can empath not empathize, I can sympathize with that. I can understand that. Yeah, but understand. it's it's probably the same love that like you have for your mum. Yeah, of course, man. Yeah, you know, course, it's, course, it's, course. it's 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 deep rooted. Like if you see that person in pain, you are in pain. So it's almost like if they hurt, you hurt. Okay, it's it's on a it's 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 like a different level. It's like even on a long term partner, or sometimes not in a long term partner, but someone that you could meet who you and them just connect like a, like a twin flame and stuff like that. And it's almost like it makes no sense for you to hurt them course, because right. you're just hurting yourself. Of course, but again, you know, unfortunately, some people don't see it that way. Yeah, yeah. But then I think that that if you if you really 
get that person that I want to get them to do some, get them to sit with their thoughts, mm. then they would admit or to themselves, not to anybody else, that what we're saying is the truth. You know, um, but it's that again, it's, you know, like to sit with your thoughts is it's not an easy thing to do. I feel that a lot of people, I think people, a lot of people had to deal with that over the pandemic. You know, like I, I did, I know you did, and I think that having that time away from inverted commas real life allow people just to just delve deeper into it, to have that level of understanding, to sit, better sit with your thoughts and just probe, man, and try and figure certain things out. Yeah, it's, really yeah. Healthy. it's healthy to do it, mate. It's healthy. It's healthy. clean out of your, of your brain and your mind. Because your like, your mind can end up controlling you. I know. And just mess up your life, man. And I, I've been that dude. But it's it's funny Still because funny now. yeah, there's there's like, and this is one of the things that baffles me. Well, it doesn't baffle me because I understand why people do it because it's easier to watch Netflix than it is to um, read a book that's gonna have challenge you. Yeah, challenge you. But also, there's books out there that will give you instructions. Right, what I want you to do next is I want you to take a piece of paper and I want you to, and it makes you go deeper inside yourself. Mm -hmm. But again, that can be quite scary. So it's I know people that I've given five questions to. I've said to you, look, you know what? I'll give you a couple of days. Get that back to me. Um, because it's going to really help me to identify, you know, little tweaks that we need to do um, with your development. And um, they're in another chat group with someone else, and I know that they're talking about, they're excited about stuff that's not necessarily going to get them true happiness. True, true, true real stuff. Yeah, yeah. And for me, it's like, would you rather have short-term happiness and long-term unhappiness or would you have short-term pain and long-term happiness and for me it's a no-brainer I'd rather dig deep within myself find the ugly crap and the dark stuff that I've been through because it's like they're engraved back there somewhere and the fun times are not necessarily engraved as harsh as they are my mind sometimes plays tricks on me where I could be having a quite a good day and then it'll be like, remember that time when you, you know, and it'll be just like, why did you have to remind me about that for? But yeah, let's think about it for a half an hour. I'm glad it's not just me that it happens to no, me. It happens no, to me no, on a daily no, basis. No. Can you remember when you crashed your car? Remember how painful that was? Can you remember? And it's just like, well, I don't want to think about that right now. And it's like, it's almost like that's engraved. But fun times. You know, it's a protection mechanism, isn't it? That's like, a, like your brain's trying to protect you. Like, like it's trying to like warn you off from, from that happening again. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. yeah. It's, it, but it's preventing your happiness. One hundred percent. Of course, of course. Yeah, but yeah. Um. So yeah, it's 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 deeply engraved within you, and the happy times that you've had. You, I have to remind myself by looking at videos and pictures and stuff like that, and it's it's a shame that that isn't as engraved in our minds as it is. Remember when you was down you know yeah yeah um it's this it's, it's, it's deep stuff yeah, man yeah it's yeah, deep stuff yeah. but this is the sort of stuff that i want to face because like i say to most of my clients that uh, once you face this stuff you realize that what it actually is it's 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 a it's a it's a formula and it's just like it's 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 there to be beat it's like a stage in a game of course it is yeah. you know and if you like, I remember like, I don't play computers now, but I remember when I was younger playing Street Fighter and stuff, and you get to the final boss, and then you try to beat him, and you, you took you like an hour and a half to get to this final boss, and you and then oh, you failed, but then you picked up lessons along the way yeah. to know how to beat each player to get to that boss again. Yeah. So you'd go back to the beginning because you'd lose your lives, and then you'd have to fight all the, the people, and you get back to the final boss, and you're like, right, I remember last time I fly kicked him and it didn't work so now I'm going to try and sweep and you just try the never and you go back to the beginning you try again and it's it's crazy because that's how I feel about like what we have to do to get to the other side of pain to find love and happiness yeah but and that's what I, I feel like this this is what should be really, really good taught in schools like you said earlier you know you get certain people in like chat groups talking about trivial stuff where they should be maybe talking about the health and stuff you know i mean but most people think that getting that new merc or whatever or i know those new balenciagas whatever they're called yeah it's that it's going to make them happy but they still got like those 
you know, preaching and stuff like that. You yeah, say, yeah. Just a bit mad, but for, uh, and I put out a video the other day that said that um people are prepared to invest time in things over their health, whereas them things they can't do without good health. This is what I'm saying. Like your your, 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 your red bottoms aren't going to help you when. You, like you're lying in the hospital bed or something like that. You see what I'm saying, yeah, man? Yeah. Or you're trying to lose weight, right? Yeah, yes. I know, I know, and again, I'm not trying to come across as judgmental. That this is just my opinion, and hopefully, the point I'm trying to come across with is 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 coming across well. It's not a judgmental thing. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely not for me. The point I'm trying to get across as well, because I'm not perfect, and I'm I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm not perfect. You know, I I still no I still can put things. No, actually, I'll correct that because I I I I'm in a beautiful position where I can exercise meditate and read on a daily basis so uh, i feel blessed i yeah, understand yeah. that some people i've got friends who work for like investment banking and stuff and they're doing like 13 hour days and stuff like that you know so um their lifestyles are a lot different from mine so i get it but for me it's a no-brainer because it's almost like my brain needs that 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 self-love and that care for me to be able to function in any any other aspect and area of my life if my brain is stressed and under pressure and i'm thinking about bills i'm thinking about relationships i'm thinking about debt i'm thinking about you know the past traumas then i won't be able to function on a daily basis and i won't be able to give the value that i do to my clients at this current moment so that for me is it's almost like having a phone battery where every night I recharge it. Mm. Every day I make sure that I've got like routines and rituals to help me recharge myself. But also on the flip side with my health, I know that like, I can't be as foolish to think that if I don't take care of my vessel, that it's not gonna serve me well. You know, it's like, I'm not gonna be one of those people that I service my car, I make sure the tread's okay on the tire, I make sure the oil's filled up, I make sure the water's got enough for the radiator, I make sure it's got enough petrol to last me my journey, but then yet I'm going to pollute my body because for me, my body's more important than the car. 100 million. So why is it the same? So it doesn't make sense to me, but I understand that how fear can literally get you to forget and it can literally wipe your memory clean so you don't even know a why you do things or even who you are you know fear can erase years of your life like you, you picked on, up on something when i said that i can't remember the first time where i felt betrayed when i gave love and i reckon you can if i if, if, if you try if i really tried and i went you know into the you know, the, the cells of my, my brain and look deep, deep, deep. And it probably took about 30 minutes, but that just goes to show you the power of how it can wipe, you can wipe it from, you can wipe anything from your memory. Of you, can. you know, um, so yeah, it's just deep. So I can understand why some people don't want to face certain fears. But for me, that's the greatest form of self-love yeah man i love i love, I love doing it i like, said so, you know can i like people listen to this man i don't claim to be the perfect person i don't claim to be a mentor or anything like that i'm just i'm just very driven i'm very focused and i think having so much downtime over the past 18 years well the first 2020 put it that way i just had just a lot of times just to focus on things and i just i faced a lot of uh, fears even before the pandemic i mean i have a, i still do have a big fear of like deep water and stuff and like this, like I remember one time on holiday, I just literally jumped jumped into the sea from a boat, <laughs> and panics like crazy. If you saw me, you'd be like cracking up, man. But I did it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm yeah. a better person for it. Yeah, yeah. So I said, the facing your fears is one of the best things you can do. I'm a hundred percent an advocate for doing that. Yeah, it's yeah. not easy. It's not easy at all. I'm saying if I can do it, like anyone could do it. Yeah. Like who, like who am I? Like, who am I, man? I'm just someone who's not prepared to say. Oh, I can't do that. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just not built that way, Pete. Yeah. Like, you know me, mate. I'm not built that way. And and the thing is, like, if you look back historically at all, some of the things that you thought was gonna break you, maybe, maybe, man. Especially like going back to turn it back into the love thing. Like my last relationship, man, that broke me, man, broke me. But I'm like, 
like I'm so grateful it did. To be honest with you, I still have been a dickhead now. Mm. Don't be Pete. Like you were there, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a much better person for that now. So sometimes it can be it's how you about you perceive things, and I I now know how to express love and how to give love. Most yeah, to give and express love and to receive it. Yeah, yeah. But I had to go from pain in order to get the pleasure. 100%. And and there's, like, a thin, there's a very thin line between the two things as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like maybe make a podcast when I was <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. But just to touch upon what you said about you jumped in the water and you faced your fears and then you came at the other end and you felt probably energised, didn't it? Yeah, you, man. You, you, I won't give the full story, but I was on holiday and all my friends, I can't, I can't, it's a long story. I won't bore people right now, but I was, I was, all my friends swam out to this like beautiful rock formation. And I was just sat on this boat just thinking like, I really want to do it, but I was praying as pee. I was like, and then, I can't remember if I went to that, I won't go into the full story, but basically I just put a life jacket on, I just jumped in. And then my friend swam back and got me and we swam to the rock formation, which was probably about, about like 50 meters from the boat. But when we took photographs, stuff on the rock formation, I felt so proud of myself because pee like, I'm petrified of deep water, you know? Yeah. And I swam out there and I just felt like, you know, G, you're a bit of a G today. You know what I mean? And I felt yeah, good, yeah, man. Because yeah, if I went yeah. back to the shore and I, and everyone else had that experience, which I could have done, I wouldn't have felt like I let, I let myself down. I'm, I'm yes, not prepared yeah, to do yeah, that. Yeah. And one thing that I find is that when you don't sometimes take those risks or, you know, make those leaps into, into chasing your dreams, it turns into regret and then that oh, regret turns, yeah. Turns that would have been a, ripple, a domino effect for loads yeah, of other things. Yeah. But like, you know what, G, like, I don't know, I don't, yeah, it's just, it would have been a domino effect. And that, and if, in, in order, but that's definitely a domino effect in a, in a more positive direction now, because after I did that, I thought, man, oh, if I could do that, and I haven't done that since I was eight years old. So I need to drown, basically that's what happened, I need to drown, but I still, still have another time. But yeah, like, if I didn't do that, boy, uh, the fact I did do that made me think, like, what else can I do if I really, jump in just do it yeah yeah you know I mean? no definitely and it's funny that you should do that and then win because sometimes the situation is taken out of your hands when something happens to you and it forces you to actually face a demon or something that's been buried in the past and once the fear that you had of that that moment once you go through it and you discuss it and you talk about it you realize that the anticipation was worse than the actual event happening. I know to get up, but how, how am I going to drown with a flipping life jacket on? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it don't make yeah, sense. Yeah. What a shark, I need way I could have drowned if a shark came up to me, B, I took it off, <laughs> or C, I don't know, some other like, dickhead thing would have happened, you know what I mean? But come on, man. So, but, like, I, I was more scared of, of potentially drowning than actually drowning. Yeah. And like, I wasn't going to drown. Yeah, you know I mean, so, yeah, exactly. The anticipation of drowning was worse than you actually being in the water. And I clocked then, I was just like, I generally think I could do it. You know, I could do anything I put my mind to. Yeah, no, it. definitely. But you have to also remember that the way the body is built is just there to protect you. So mm-hmm. the fear was like, don't jump in. 100%. I want to keep you safe. Yes, well, of course it was. Yeah, different. but yeah, yeah. But yeah, sometimes you got to push, push past that. Yeah, yeah. So one of the questions that I've um, saved on my phone that I wanted to also bring up or ask you was, when was the last time you said I love you to someone other than someone in your family? Saturday, I think. Yeah, Saturday. Send it to my friend. Oh, brilliant. Because I, I do, I love her, man. Big up Josie. <laughs> uh, yes, I'll send it to Josie. I'll send it to all my friends, really. Like, yeah, you know, romantically, that's what I said it was, you know, I was in a relationship. <laughs> that 2018, so I've been some time. So, uh, yeah, there's a vacancy, by the way. But, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, but I think it's important to say that, though. It's important just to say, I love you. Like we touched upon before, not just to get to the habit of repeating myself, but it's important just to, whenever you see someone, just to say, like, you love them, man. Yeah. Like, you, just, you just don't know, man. Like within our, our little crew, we've had a few, even in the scene we're in, people passing away and stuff. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like yeah. my personal family and stuff, I've had people pass away. Yeah, same here. It's, it's, it's real, man. You it's, know, it's and real. it's funny because sometimes you will reflect on the last communication you had with that person like i i do in my head you know um one of the other, one of the other things that swims around like a like a, a goldfish in, in the washing 
backbone of a brain of mine is um yeah just sometimes the last things you said to certain people i've got friends um like ty who i was supposed to meet to get see a cd off in brixton and then that was it you know and sometimes i look at messages and think i just oh you know i can't make it this big maybe like and it was just like that was it that was the last thing to do that it's so easy to get caught up in the matrix i mean i'll do it p but i do i clock myself but again, I, maybe I don't, because there's still people I've been saying, I'm, I need, that's a lie, actually. I do, but there's still people in my f- WhatsApp messages now saying, yeah, let's meet up, let's meet up, and I, I still have them. Yeah, sometimes yeah. Life, like, life does happen, though. Yeah, no, you definitely, definitely. And it's, it's not only us. I know, like, I'm in a few WhatsApp groups, and yeah, like, it's not only us. I know, like, I'm in a few WhatsApp groups, and like, Sometimes people say, let's meet up and one person can't make it and other person can't make it and then we end up saying, okay, let's reschedule for everyone can make it and then one day it gets pushed to another and then it gets, the, the can gets kicked down the road, so to speak. And it happens, you know, but um, one of the things that I want to kind of start doing and hopefully that um, any of our crew who watch this, we need to, we said it before in the group anyway, that we need to, um, you know, make certain dates maybe once a month or maybe even once every six weeks yeah, where man. where we just we just make things happen because if I've, if I've learned anything over the last eighty months is that like shit's real, Trust you me. know. It's, it's 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 and we're getting old as well, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. We're getting old as well, man. So like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know I, I, mean? I can't I can't believe I'm I'm actually middle aged. I don't, I don't even feel it. Man. <laughs> I still feel I'm twenty like twenty six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah one of the other things i want to touch upon as well was self-love because i know that there's loads of different kind of um ways that self-love can be described um i have a day where i do my pampering and all that sort of stuff which i think is very important so i'll do stuff like um i'll go and have a good training session where i sweat loads and make sure i release loads of endorphins into my body so i feel absolutely fantastic um, I'll have like um, a sauna, a steam and a swim and then on the lounges I'll just lie down and I'll just you know zone out you know perhaps read a couple of uh, chapters of, of a book that's gonna also keep my brain vibrating at the right frequency so that's kind of like a self-care day for me but I think like we touched upon before and again I don't want to repeat ourselves but there's a deeper level of self-love it, kind of borderline crosses on self-respect as well. Can you elaborate a little bit more? So um, letting people treat you a certain way. Letting? Yeah, or allowing people treat you to treat you a certain way um, that's not necessarily positive. I don't think that that is... Um, I think setting boundaries so people don't do treat you that a way that's not aligned with your spirit is a very important part of self-care and self-love, even more so important than me having my sauna and spa and steam days because um, boundaries are are, are, are are fantastic. I think you know? so. <laughs> I think so, but you know, I stay on that day. Like, yeah, I, I, I echo that, P. I just think it's just, you know, I, you know I'm, I, I'm, I would say I'm extremely loving, genuine sincere person but equally if i feel those my my positives are being uh abused is a strong word or just not appreciated then yeah yeah that's a choice you've made isn't it man yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean everything like every every commodity is fine right so and, and some things don't last forever so you need to be mindful of uh yeah, I, I believe in it attracting. I mean, we put out this what you get back. You know what I'm saying? So if, if you're giving something and it's not necessarily coming back, then yeah, okay. Yeah, Listen, learn. yeah, yeah, definitely. Keep on moving. Like my park isn't going forward. <laughs> right? so, like, the world keeps spinning. This is what I'm saying, Pete. Um, we're going forward together. We ain't going forward at all. So yeah, it is. yeah. So definitely. So yeah. So for me, like I said, self care is about um, setting some clear boundaries that are aligned with your spirit and who you are and where you want to go. Um, obviously, the, the external self-care, um, respecting yourself and your body, this temple that we've been given to look after it. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's, that's an important thing. And 
Obviously, it's, fitness is both quite important. Well, not quite. It's very, very important. important. Yeah, it's it's both. Both. yeah. More so for us, uh, for more mental aspects of it. Yeah, but it's, it's the discipline and just the, the, the self improvement of it. And I guess me training is my self care. I don't really. I do go to saunas and stuff. But I don't really do the pampering and stuff uh, as much as I would like to. But I'm, I'm going to the sauna and just having that little me time. Like when I go to the gym and. Is that what I said? Did I say the sauna? Did I say the gym? It just says sauna. Okay. Just said gym. okay, cool. Okay. So going to the gym is uh, it's kind of like my time. I kind of zone out. I don't really talk too tough when I go to the gym and stuff like that. But it's just my time just to attempt to quiet down my very hyperactive brain and just focus on one thing and get, focused on, and get past the pain and just focus on the rewards of, of training. And stuff yeah, like that, yeah. yeah, definitely. So... There's a mental side of it as well, like we touched upon um, slightly before, but also stuff like updating your software, I like to call it. Yeah, so it's right. like um, not running on Windows 2000. Or 88, <laughs> yeah. But actually updating your software yeah. because as the world turns, as we both, we both said, that things change and it's all about looking at things from different perspectives, but also learning not only about yourself, but learning how to perhaps cope with certain situations that may arise in the future so you're prepared and you're not going to come up to an obstacle and be like, damn, I need a hammer to, to knock down this obstacle, but then you didn't pick one up along your journey. So I think that it's really important to, like you said, you've been reading um, a few books and that is, for me, a prime way of upgrading your software because us. you don't know what you don't know until you know. Hey, listen, mate, listen. I hate reading, man. I hate reading. But it's only, I only really picked up reading. Well, I say reading. I read. A, I listen to a lot of audio books. And the only reason I'm really... I've been listening to audio books. I started 2018, loosely. But it's been 2020 that I really have got into audio books. I think I've done that like, this year alone. But the past year, like March, I think I've done... Like 11 or 12 books, which for me is a train a load of books, man. Yeah. Trust me, yeah. like, mate, the only time I read before them was like flipping the Sun newspaper. <laughs> I don't read the Sun newspaper now, so that's a little disappointing. You know I mean? Yeah, no, but, uh, that's we, toilet paper. We, we, we don't, we don't, we don't. We don't I ain't judge, man. If you want to read that, it's like a cool <laughs> thing in there. But, uh, mm, yeah, so after reading is like, it's enhanced me. I'm, trust me, Pete, because I'm, yeah, I'm well opinionated, man. But one thing I've learned to do is just, uh, to challenge my opinions because I'm not always right and I, I actually love to be proven wrong now because it means I've learned something new yes you get what I'm saying yes. so I love to challenge I read books that obviously interest me but just challenge me to think differently I read autobiographies I read books on like, mind and, and history and like powerful significant people and stuff like that and it's, it just I, f I find it very beneficial and I find it big shifts in my character. No, that's brilliant, man. Big shifts in my character. Yeah, because I think that, like, one of the, another thing, going back to self-care, is that another form of self-care is forgiving yourself for your past mistakes. Plus. But if you don't upgrade to the latest software, you might not have the ability to forgive yourself for past mistakes. Mm -hmm. And like I said to you in the past, I've made some howlers, absolute, I've carried on my back that's probably prevented me from moving forward in my life because I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't, I didn't want to have to face them. It's painful, man. Yeah, it's painful. Um, but with, with audio books, with books, with Even conversations, conversations with conversations, yeah, with um, counselling, with Plus. hypnotherapy, I have just about forgiving myself for most of the mistakes that I made in my past. Sometimes I'll be, um, I'll look back and like I said to you, sometimes you remember past things and then create further in your brain and I'll look back and say, why did I do that? It makes no sense. But I, I, I forgive myself because at that time, I generally thought I was doing the best thing and I wasn't none the wiser. I didn't read any books. The only thing I did probably was, <sighs> follow a few inspirational people on the gram mm. um and then even when they were trying to get through to me with certain knowledge or when it comes to paying for courses to um enhance my my knowledge i 
fear would kick in and say, Louis, yeah, it's a scam. You're going to waste your money. It's just get the free stuff. And it's cool. Not realizing that there's a lot. Now I, 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 I pay for information because. You can't get it for free no more. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I realized the way it works. Yeah. I realized the way it works. You can only get so much information um, and guidance and, and, and support. For, for, for free, you know, um, if you want an expert to help you, to save you time, then you have you've to invest, man. You've got yeah, invest, you've got to invest, yeah. If you, if, you, if you pay peanuts, you get monkeys, man. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. Saying? So you, need to, you need to invest in that. And I see it as an investment, you know, the, the books I, I get. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the books that I've written, written? the books that I've um, read and the work that I've done on myself has helped me to forgive myself for past mistakes, which has freed up space in my head and given me freed up energy to do different things. Mm. So it's definitely money well spent. It's, it's, it's definitely time um, worth spent as well, because had I not done that, I would have had a blockage yeah, of course, mate. where the energy that I could be using to do something to better <coughs> myself would have been used to look at past situations from 15, 20 different scenarios of what if that happened or what if this happened, whereas now I can kind of put it to bed and say, well, this is what happened. And that's, all you knew, that's, that's how you knew how to manoeuvre at that moment in time as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's what I was going to say. So I can't, it's like I'm looking back at it with the knowledge that I've gained through losing my dad, through um, perhaps not... A, not having great relationships with my family members or um, withholding love from everything on this planet to the point where I wouldn't feel bad stepping on 20 spiders, you know? Like, if I, I can't even imagine that version of you, though, Pete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's beautiful. If you were that person, then that's beautiful to, to see. Yeah, no, it's, you know. it's funny. I don't, even when I see spiders or things, like flies, dragonflies, or my heart. I just think, what right do I have to take? That's a big kill them because it's. I do this. I, mean, I used to be, I used to be so arachnophobic, like you would not believe. Bad arachnophobic. Yes. Yeah. Bad. But you got to a point now. If I see a spider, I literally just pick it up and and, and take it outside, man. Yeah. Bad, yeah. Parrot, like mad arachnophobic, mate. Yeah, I'll tell you the situation another time how I, got over, over, how I managed to overcome it, but yeah, it's just... You got bit and turned to Spider-Man? How do you know? <laughs> no, 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 I knew you, you were Spider-Man. I knew you were Spider-Man. Peter Parker or Peckham, didn't it? With a suntan. <laughs> yeah. With a receded hairline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, so it's... um, Yeah, I, I can't... I, like, I have no right to... Who says this planet is mine? They're sharing it as they have much right man. to be. And they're probably here before we were here, innit? Yeah, so yeah. Saying, man, but yeah. Be in it up there, yeah, so, yeah, it's just, that is another form of self-care to me. Um, but also, in the past, I, and I haven't acted correctly with family members. So I almost expect them, because we're of the same blood, to think like me. Nah, so, true. yeah, yeah. But it, frustr it would frustrate me where I'm like, well, it's simple what you do in it. Like, I can see it, like, clear as day. And they're like, but how did you do that? I'm like, like, like just do it, isn't it? Like, or... This is something I really battle with, Pete. I, I, this is like, this is, this is one of my main triggers. I do have that as well, where I think like, how can I figure this out? And I'm just, I'm just me, you know, I'm not saying I'm this and that, but I'm like, how can I figure this out? And like, you cannot like, you feel like it's basic thing, but then flip that and get out of my flipping ego and realize that in order for them to think how you think, they'll need to have had at least 80% of the experiences you've had. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that yeah. is like you can't put that on other people, man. 100%. And it's only when I think like that that I pipe down, yeah, you need to be because I'm the worst for dying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't get me wrong, I, like I, today I was having a moment because someone couldn't see my perspective when it, it's like, for me, it's glaringly obvious, like your actions are gonna take you to a certain place. So if you want, if you don't wanna reach that place where you get diabetes and you have to change your actions now, but then yet they're like, 
not changing their actions and in five years time they're going to be annoyed with themselves because they didn't do some simple stuff like Basic not things. freaking drink seven up yeah. every day do you know what I'm trying to say so the, today I was having a moment like if I can see it it's or maybe they can and, 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 and yeah yeah and it's it written in, in near enough every Google search in the world do you know what I mean like why can't why are you playing silly? Self denial, mate. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know this person. Yeah, probably, yeah, yeah. I'm not white for me to judge this person, but by the sounds of it, it's self denial, isn't it? Ooh. But when my Ooh. man or my girl's foot's not on in place no more, yeah. then yeah. life gets yeah. real, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, so yeah, I struggle with that daily. But again, what I, another way I tried to flip it, similar to where you flipped it, is like if my goal was to make a million pounds, and a millionaire might look at me and say, well, it's obvious, isn't it? I've made a million pounds. Like, it's really easy. But, like, there's, there's information that you have to do it. You just have to pick one and stick to it and do it. And yeah, I'm thinking, but I can't make a million. It's the same sort of thing, yeah. you know? And I haven't been through his experiences, or maybe I don't have the drive to do it, or maybe I don't even want it that bad. That's what I'm saying. Or I'm not prepared to put the work that he put in to get where he is, That's or she is. Yeah. So... Comparison, comparing yourself to other people, uh, again, the highest speed the worst for me. I just learned it's futile, mate. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's not only a form of, I think it's, it's just disrespectful to the genuine, authentic person that you are to compare yourself to someone else or maybe try to model yourself from someone else. I think we're all unique. Or I think you can model yourself. I mean, I said, I said to you before, Pete, I, I, I admire you, man. Like, you're one of, you're like, literally one of my closest friends, but I admire you. I look up to you. Yeah. And uh, uh, many aspects of your character I aspire to be more like. So I don't think, I'll maybe you know, use that terminology, but I think, I know what you're saying. Yeah, but. yeah. Um, I just think that you have to work with your quirkiness and uniqueness and let that shine rather than I don't want to be like you. I think no. you're a bit ridiculous. <laughs> what I mean, but like, just pass you. I'll just take, take that behind you. Um, no, but um, yeah, I think that it's it's yeah, it's just about being uniquely you and realizing that that's your superpower. Man. That's your strength. You know, they'll no be, one, no one can be great. No, you they know? can't be like me, man. Yeah. They you can't know? like. They'll yeah. never be another yeah. person like me. They'll never be another yeah. person. But it's, yeah, not, it's yeah. not possible. It's not possible, P. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not possible to be. They will, they will, they will, whether it's a good or bad thing, they'll never be another person like me. Yeah. It's not possible. Yeah. Literally, it's not possible. Yeah. To go to the same school, have the same friends, go to the same raves I've been to, holidays, relationships, break down of relationships, that's like everything that's happened to me. All the variables. Me, all the variables. Yeah. It's not yeah. So embrace that. Yes, yes, yes. So again, another form of self-respect. <laughs> is we talked about setting boundaries, um, strengthening relationships with family members, and also our favorite is health and fitness. It's another form of self-love, which I think is important to actually invest in. It's investment, man. You know? Because I know some people who invest in gold, I know some people who invest in watches, I know some people who invest in cars, I know some people who invest in stocks, shares, or Bitcoin. But I think the greatest asset you have is this shell. Hundred percent, man. You know, it's I could be like Bezos and flipping like paralyzed from the neck down. Look at Steve Jobs, all the money yeah, in the yeah, world, yeah, and, yeah. and and couldn't save him. Couldn't save him. Yeah, that's what know? I'm saying, man. And it's it's, it's a real it's a real talk, Pete. Yeah, I'm 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 happy. I have this mindset regarding health and stuff and and and, and self love. You know, some people. May see it as an extreme thing. I get that. I know you were saying I'm extreme. I'm fine. I'm not even extreme. I just like to just invest in my future. You know, I know people, and I say this with chest. I don't care. I say this with confidence. I meant to say when I say that, like who are like in their twenties and I'm healthy doing it. And I pride myself on that because I put in the work to, yeah, to, to yeah, be that way, yeah, man. Yeah. Don't feel I mean I've got vices. Don't get it twisted. Like even today I, I went to the gym and I came out of Sainsbury's with cakes and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm not perfect, but I know I do more than I do more positives than the negatives I also entertain. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So no. you just got like, yeah, I, I, you know, you got. I, I'm looking to live a decent life. Man. I'm looking to be mobile, Pete. You know what I mean? I'm yeah, looking to be yeah. all like in my 
at 70s, 80s, or hunched. I look to be pushing weights in that man, running yeah, gun yeah. on the day, and that's yeah. still dancing, bust up a dance floor, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but the funny thing is, it's like, I get it that some people are just not into that, bro. Like, and you, and you have to, I don't, I personally don't, I don't understand that. Yeah. Like, you're, like, you're, I don't think people realise it's how magnificent the human body is. Like, you could do so, like, it's just a magnificent thing. Yeah, yeah. And people just abuse it. But again, I'm not, I, this is, I don't really like talking on this subject because I sound a bit judgmental, in it? But it's just like, I just don't get it, man. I can be, I, I think, yeah. I can be a little bit judgmental, but I just think, like, come on, you get one body, you got, you got to look after that. Yeah. Right? Because it's just, you can't part. We luckily, we're not at the stage now where you can party straight and pass your body. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Until the metaverse comes and we put the glasses on it and we're just, we're in this alternate um place where you can be whoever the hell you want. You could have a six pack if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we're we'll not seeing any credits. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Put your credit card deals in here. <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, we're not there yet, but I, I totally get you, and I'm slightly biased on the whole topic because I I work in the health and fitness industry. But um, anybody who really knows me is that um, my 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 unique selling point or my strength is how I can get into your mind and yeah, make yeah. you to change the way you think about yeah. your body. And that's I, what people gravitate towards you what you do, Pete. Yeah. I've seen you training people, and I see like I know that's why you got. The following that you that you have because people like I I, I see people I know we're going on that little tangent here but I see certain PTs that are training people and they're on their phone and that not even engaged whereas you have a connection you inspire people yeah and I uh, and, and you can not just to blow my own yeah trumpet but I I get upset if people are not progressing I'm yeah, like yeah. come on like it kind of reflects on you as well yeah 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 definitely hundred percent it does but because you're teaching them how to be healthy yeah but I see it as they're throwing away their potential. Yeah. And like, I always said that some ways I wish that we had a clock ticking down on our wrists. So it was built into us. So every day you look and think, wow, 465 days left. Next day, wow, 462 days left, wow, 400 days left. So it would give you a little bit more urgency to, to do to shit, do shit <laughs> live and leave a positive legacy and you know going back to the whole love topic is that i think ultimately everybody wants to give love they don't know it yet but they i know a lot of people want to receive love 100 percent. but we just need to kind of crack on and get on and start to 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 to, to do it because do what do what like give to, love. yeah unconditionally yeah. like I but, think there'd be the world, I think, yes, yeah, sorry to cut you off there, but I feel the world would be a much more of a peaceful place if we just learn to, if you can't even love, just be more tolerant, man. Yeah. I haven't yeah. got to like you, I can, but I can tolerate, I think even tolerance, for me, tolerance isn't a bad thing. I don't think, some people might say it's a bit of a bad thing, but just like, when I say tolerance, I mean just let people be who they want to be, but maybe that is a form of love, because like, I'll never try and force you or any of my close friends to be a certain way. And that kind of ties into unconditional love. I was having a conversation with another mutual friend a little while ago. I said, I can't, I don't want to drop names in it, but it's just like, it's long. But uh, yeah, a, a close friend of mine taught me about unconditional love recently. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And taught me about unconditional love. And uh, how, 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 how would you describe unconditional love? Loving someone and they do things that trigger you and provoke you, but you are able to over to bypass those for a better word and just still have that level of love and respect and care for them despite the fact that they like a Will and Jada type of relationship. What they what they call that now they they what they call that they're uh flipping uh was it a term for separation or something like that. In what entanglement? Yeah, oh yeah, entanglement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what things. Uh, when, well, you elaborate on that. What do you mean when you say that? I I don't know. It's just my perspective. What where I see sometimes I think that their love is so deep that they can say or speak or do certain things, and the other party accepts it. Yeah, I think that's kind of it, man. But yeah, like, again, I'm not saying I'm. If 
I don't think I don't do things that don't annoy other people in my world. I know I do. I know I do. I know I do. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't personally want to be in a relationship with someone like me. No, I would go one. Because... Give me one, give me one thing that you... And I'll do the same as well. Okay, because I can be very selfish. I, I, I know... I agree with that. Yeah, I know what I want. And I, I believe that I was put on this earth and it's my vessel. It's my mind. And... It's my choice to do whatever I want to do. So when you want to do it, when I want to do it. So but you do realize that. <laughs> I know it's had. But you do realize that has been full effects. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. It has been full effects. But sometimes I'm so in the zone of like, right, well, I want to go. I want to move to this country. And this time, I want to do this in that time. That I I sometimes see another person, or I, I sometimes see. Um, other people's obstacles in me reaching what is my ultimate goal. So for me, it's like I want to retire. How old am I now? You said three to four years, isn't it? You said 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's my goal. And I, I can't physically fathom. Well, I, if, if it didn't happen, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but I know I can make it happen and I wouldn't let anything or I'd work as hard as I can to get close to that goal. <laughs> That's right. I'm very really diplomatically said. Yeah. Wait, I was just looking at you so you're yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, I've got to be I hear that. Yeah, yeah. so, so that, does, that, that is one of the, the triggers. I've been honest, that is one of the triggers for me as well. But yeah. I think I've learned to accept that in you, Pete. It's not my duty to try and change you. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, I know that the end game is worth me being as selfish as I am because when I'm in that place where I'm like, wow, I've done it. I've done it, I'm living the dream that I set for myself. And I know the past sacrifices I made was worth it because I'm here at my goal. Um, and hopefully- you on your own, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one else around. No one else around, no. Else around. no but I'll, servants. No, I'll, I'll, I'll have people around me who I'd like to share the experience with. And I know that they'll be there because again, going back to love, that they love me unconditionally, that they can accept that a part of Rich and Pops is he can be selfish. He can be a little bit narrow-minded, but ultimately it's because I've got a destination I want to get to. And I know that when I get to that destination, the people who are around me, who love me, who are patient with me, will also experience that bliss where we look at each other and clink glasses and be like, we done it, you know? We done it, you know? And that's why, like, even with your you in the film industry, like, it wouldn't upset me if you was a little bit more selfish and said that, like, you know what, I'm not going out for six months. I'm going to do, do this. That, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I can't, like, do this now because I know you do this already. But, like, because you know when you're going to click towards or you're being recognised for your achievements, that sacrifice is worth it. So, again, I think that without, you know, going off on a tangent and going off into a different direction and the conversation we're trying to have is that, I'm glad that I grew up in a generation that I did because with, I am prepared to have short-term pain and long-term gain. Whereas I think that, especially with this, 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 this digital world now, that people want stuff now so much. Instantaneous. Instantaneous yeah. gratification. So much so that they'll invest 200 pounds on, on VR glasses and log into, um, in, in, into, into, a, into a world that will give them everything they want at the click of a button rather than working on themselves right. and and doing the hard work and giving themselves real self-love to be like, you know what, I've got to face these demons because I don't want to wake up in bed when I'm 80 years old and, and think, you know what, what, why didn't I just do it? I'm, 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 I'm at this destined, I'm, I'm at this place anyway. I've reached this destination, I'm 80. Even if I did do it, I'd still be at this place. So why didn't I do it? Yeah. But it's easier to take. I mean, like, like, like we're talking about, we're going to virtual reality. That's a whole other conversation for another yeah. time. But that's that's the easier route, though, isn't it? That's uh, that kind of... Why would you want to face your demons when you can go, plug something into your head? and, and live, live, Don't even talk about virtual reality. Just, why would you want to face your demons when you can just live a world of uh, fantasy? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's easy, isn't it? Denial, it's just, it's just, it's just denial, man. Like, you know, 
just again, I ain't trying to come across as judgmental because I'm, I, I'll say I'm not, I'm not perfect. I'll, I'll, I'll say that straight up, I'm not perfect. But I will. Perfection doesn't even exist. It doesn't even exist. Yeah, yeah, I even love, like I wouldn't even want the perfect partner. I would just do my head in. Absolutely, do my head in. I mean, like physically, like this. I want someone who's going to challenge me and provoke me, even irritate me a little bit, just so I could feel something. Some different forms of yeah, emotions. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I don't know. It's just. It's, 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 it's deep, man. It's deep. It's deep, dude. Yeah, no, love is deep. Love is is a real strange one. Like, it can be nice. It can be beautiful. It can kill you, mate. Not kill it, you, No, it, it can be a horrible emotion. Yeah. Like you said, you touched upon before, that it's such a thin line between love, hate, anger. There's su- it's, it's such a thin line that, like, Sometimes when you think you hate someone, you really love them. Yeah, yeah. I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. Before. You know, so, yeah, it's funny that this one L-O-V-E can, like, if you used to do a spider diagram now, there's lots of different close emotions to the actual word love, that it can be positive, it can be negative, it can be lovely, it can be harmful, it can be hurtful, it can be dangerous. You know, when you see people who still, oh, I love her, you know, I don't want her, but she can't be with no one else, and... All the you know kind of crazy behaviors. So some people like it can literally this it can make you do so much destructive things. It's just it's like a drug pee. It's the most when it's smooth. It's the most beautiful intoxicating feeling. Yeah, it's like it can just elevate you to like levels of just like ecstasy, man. But when it's not going right, you're going out your mind. You're not sleeping. Questioning everything, you're irritable. You can stop yourself. It's yeah, like a jack on high. Yeah, it's yeah. insane. Yeah, it can be negative. Love can be negative. If, if again, if you if you don't do work on yourself and yeah, be able yeah, to, yeah. to analyze and break down your emotions and separate ego to pride to all these different things, if you're able to, in my opinion, separate those and you can look at love from a completely different perspective, even if you are in the most painful situations because you can understand where the emotion is coming from you can understand that it too will pass yeah, yeah. you can understand that everything passes it's normal to feel like that yeah and it it also makes you think that you're still it shows that you're alive yeah yeah because you can man. feel that you feel, emo- yeah, you feel something you feel something you know? Mate. you know you're not feeling numb so yeah love is is a is a real funny thing but like I said I'm glad that we can have this conversation now because if you 10 think, years ago I, I, I probably wouldn't have been able not. to have this I, I've got friends who who listen or watch this and think Greg like what the F are you talking about mate or like what happened to you and stuff like that but that's cool with me I don't care because this is who I am now yeah, yeah. and I'm still the older version of me but he's just got more layers to me now yeah, yeah and i'm yeah. Great, you know i'm not gonna apologize for having a greater understanding of you've grown emotions you've grown. You know I'm it's not it's kids it's you, you can't be 25 year old like rampage no yeah, I mean? to be fair if you made some of the decisions that you did being rampage you'd be dead May I, yeah <laughs> That's what I was gonna, so, it wasn't yeah so there. so you're older greg now so you have grown into older Greg and you're making decisions based as older Greg. Yeah. You know, so. And if I didn't learn from those mistakes, then, uh, yeah. Then, then you would have wasted failed. 10 years. 100%, mate. I would have failed. You know, so. Um, yeah, it's, it's a funny one. I want to kind of end on, on, is based on what we just said, uh, that there have been so many sides and different angles to love. Is love the answer to all our problems? Oh, I'll say so, man. Yeah. If the world is more of a loving place, place, then we won't be fighting over this dickhead shit. Like we do, like, like, literally, like, like dickhead shit. We do fight over stuff. You just say, like, hey, this is yours. This is mine. You know, I love you. Not even that, like, love you, but just to say, just be, just be respectful and love, loving. If everyone just, if you get into a, a, a crash on the street and stuff or a potential road based situation, just say, you know what? I'm sorry. I love you. Have a good day and go about your business. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? On, yeah. a, on a previous podcast, I told you about a road-based situation I had, which could have gone 
very different. It could have gone south. <laughs> it could have gone, gone south. South Pole could have gone peak. You know what I'm saying, man? But again, yeah. And I love him for doing that because he opened up my eyes to uh, a situation that didn't even need to really occur. So I think love is the answer to, to answer your question. I think it is great. If we were just all in a position, even up the pandemic, you know, I think people were more aware of their surroundings and people engaging in conversations yeah, and just yeah. helping each other out. Old people going out, getting them food, bringing them to the house, spending, trying to spend some time with them, yeah. communicating and stuff like that. So when your back's up against the wall, when the shit has hits the fan, I think love can, it can save you. No, definitely. I think even on a global level, if world leaders were more loving and more compassionate and more considerate, a lot of stuff, you know, in the past, present, and in the future, wouldn't happen. We just it would work be, together. Yeah, we just work, work together yeah, to yeah. sort the resolve yeah, situation so we all win. Yeah. As opposed to saying, I want to win, you can't win as well. That's, yeah, that's yeah, juvenile, yeah, man. Yeah. That's but if, juvenile. if there was a higher rate of love and if people were more aware of it and spread it more and were more in touch with themselves and showed them their own self-love within themselves. And yeah, I think that wars wouldn't have taken place. We'd be able to talk and say, okay, so this land was yours originally? Okay, well, you know, it would be like, it, would, it wouldn't get to the levels where ego is involved and like, no, you can't have it back or you're going to do 400 years of free work for us. Or it wouldn't be like that, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I definitely think that ultimately love is the answer and we the Beatles just, said it the, the, the best no yeah yeah, you know I mean? yeah and I think that we should just if you come into a situation where you you think fear is stopping you from loving just take a minute take a step back or just or even just say because like you're saying question your how you're feeling how, question sincerely how you're really feeling emotionally is that a really is that a positive emotion or a negative emotion because people might think fear is actually love but it's not so yeah, it's yeah, question yeah. how you're feeling, address that, start with that, and then move in the positive uh, direction. Yeah. Which is, yeah. which is to love and to give, receive and to give love. Yeah, and we're all one at the end of the day. So, like, it shouldn't take for you to, if, if you hurt anyone, it should hurt you. Should do. You know, right. it, 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 no, 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 it doesn't necessarily, but that's how I feel about the spider. If I kill the spider, a part of me dies. I feel like I'm just like, do you know what I'm trying to say? Before I didn't feel like this, I would. But you said on that beat last week, though. You joker. <laughs> stop, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so it's like, um, yeah, just, <laughs> just, just being aware and being honest and open. I think ultimately that's the way we can win, yeah. you know. And like I said, a lot of stuff we're talking about now, and it's easier said than done. But it's but repetition, though, Pete. It's, yeah, yeah, it's definitely, definitely. definitely. It's like... You've got to put the work in. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's all yeah. repetition. Yeah, it's yeah. All repetition. It's going over the same thing sometimes over and over again until you forgive yourself. It's about going to the gym, maybe... A mental gym. Yeah, a mental gym. Yeah, you have to be a mental athlete these days, but also physically to help your mental cope better with certain situations. You might have to go through a period of time where you start exercising, because in my opinion, it releases endorphins, serotonin, dopamine to your brain. It makes you feel happier. So I think that it's, it's, it's a key aspect of you feeling great and, you know, um, being able to over, overcome some situations. So you may have to go through a period of four months of not really liking going and starting your, your wellness journey but after four months, it should become habitual. It should become a bit easier and it should become pleasurable because you don't necessarily have to lift weights or go to a gym to physically, to, 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 to do that little bit of exercise. You can, you know, you know the world we live in now, you can, you can go on a metaverse and do some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I'm just saying. No, no, I, I'm sorry, I was shaking my head. There, people on the audio, I was just shaking my head with utter disbelief and disgust. No, nah, yeah. you you can you can you can work out in the comfort of your own home. You can you can you know go for a walk. You know you can appreciate what we have. Man. Yeah, Stop yeah. Focusing on what you don't have and just is there. As you think you know what I'm actually blessed. Yeah. And as I say that to you guys, I'm saying that to myself more more importantly. Yeah, it's, take for granted. yeah, definitely. One of the key things that um, I like to always remind myself on a daily basis is that I get to exercise. I don't have to exercise. I'm, there's people who perhaps can't, for their, you know, might be injured or might be disabled, and they can't do what I can do. So I'm blessed that I 
get to do what I do on a daily basis. And it's it a blessing, man. Yeah, yeah. Unless you can get into your car, drive, not crash, get out, go use the facilities, have a sauna, and you're at your own leisure, come home, do what you need to do. You're blessed, Pete. Yeah, yeah. You're blessed, yeah. Pete. But we all, we're all blessed, so... Of course, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, yeah, yeah. So there's something in everyone's lives that they can reflect on and be grateful for. But for me, like I said, one of the key things that I wanted to get across in this um, podcast was that let's get the conversation going. Let's talk more about love and analyze your own self. So if you're 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 acting from a place of maybe ego, pride, or anger you can actually sit with yourself for a minute, analyze it and introduce love through the door and, you know, maybe change the way you deal with other people or interact with other people. And we can, you know, we can start with ourselves, love yourself. And then from there, love the people close to you. And from there, just try to build it. So everyone you kind of in, come in, interact with is left in a better position than when, before they met you. Yeah, you know, yeah, on, and and, <laughs> and that's that's what I kind of wanted to get out of this podcast. So hopefully, it's been an insight into our worlds, into how we think. And it's just two, you know, it just feels like two friends talking, really. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? so just just spreading our thoughts, whether they came across as overtly opinionated or not. Hopefully, that wasn't the case. But it's just two people speaking very sincerely, and just trying to yeah spread a bit of positivity and a bit of knowledge that we. have Luckily, managed to accumulate over us walking this earth. <laughs> definitely, definitely. That's a good place to end. So, what I'm going to quickly do, Briggs, pass over to you. Any projects, anything coming up in the future that you want to share on my little small platform? Yeah, most definitely. So, uh, I've got a short, just wrapped up a short film I shot back in summer. So, hopefully, yeah, I don't know if we put a deadline on that, but I hope that you know, works with that. I was doing some more work on it last night. Um, got three more productions. Well, in pre-production, three documentaries that I'm working on, so that's pretty cool. So, yeah, hopefully two will be shot this end of the year, and I'm prepping for one next year. Just working on getting a bit more secure and a bit more funding for that. Besides that, uh, yeah, just doing my thing really. You know, just living life, man. Trying to stay put, not trying to doing my utmost to stay positive and and and, uh, and loving and stuff. So, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, for me, I'm going to be launching the January reset. So, all of you guys who want to um, reset your mind, your body, your soul, and you, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and you think to yourself, right now, January the 1st, I want to kickstart my health and my wellness routine, look out um, for the peak performance January reset because we're going to leave all the stuff that's in 2021 behind us. And we're going to focus on all the positives that we can attain and all the goals that we've been putting off for years. We're finally going to give ourselves a deadline to achieve them. So look out for the January peak performance reset and look out for the more podcasts as well, because this is the first visual one that we've done and there's going to be plenty more um, in this series. So on that note, I salute, salute you. Thank Have you an absolutely amazing um, day, wherever you are. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'll catch you soon. Peace. Take it easy.